All right, so we're on to another episode of Killing the Void podcast. My guest speaker today is Andrew. We're not going to say his last name, and we're going to keep this episode pretty casual. Uh, so just two friends talking. We met playing video games. We had a, uh, what would mutual you call friend? it? Yeah, mutual friend. Thank you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Quaz. That's his gamer yeah. name. Uh, a good friend. Yeah. How long have you known him for? <sighs> long time. I think... Uh, You're little kids, right? Yeah. Probably going on 20, 25 years. Wow. Yeah. Well, probably about 20, yeah. How old are you? 33, I believe, if I, <laughs> if I remember <laughs> correctly. <laughs> right? <laughs> the years just blend together at this point, so... Yeah, I was like, I was thinking that earlier. I was like, how old am I? Am I 31 or am I 32? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty sure I'm 31. <laughs> <laughs> yep. It's fucking sad, dude. We don't even know how old we are. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay, so I honestly I might sound stupid, but... I don't know your full story. I just know what you've shared bits and parts when you were having bad and good days uh, and we were gaming right, together. Right. Um, but what made me want to do an episode of this nature, and you might not have what my dad has. My dad okay. is uh, schizophrenic, and it's because it's not because he was born that way. It's because he did some bad drugs, I'd say, mm. when I was like five years old. And I would, I would have him on the show. I'd be interviewing him, but he doesn't do the internet thing, and I can't go to his house because he lives out of state. Uh, okay. Yeah. So I thought you were the next best person, and uh, you know, a lot of people have schizophrenia. Is that what you have, or do you have something different? No, I have a paranoid schizophrenia. It's uh, I can't tell what it was onset from. I wasn't huge into drugs. I did a lot of uh, marijuana. I mean, a lot of people don't consider that a drug. I I maybe tried a couple things once. Uh, I, I think I tried cocaine once. I tried uh, ecstasy once. I tried shrooms twice, and that was it. And um, I'd say the initial onset was probably – Maybe when I was nineteen, twenty. I, it's hard to remember now. It's been so long. What? But, uh, well, do you think it was when you were doing drugs, or was it just random? Like you weren't even doing drugs at the time. And... No, I, I was. I was not even doing drugs at the time. I mean, I was still smoking marijuana, which they I don't say, think that would. Do I, it. They they say because there's two. You know how there's two different strains, and they say, and everything that was being sold when we were kids was the bad stuff. So I was like, you know. Yeah, if That's they I laced doing. it, I guess, with, like, Windex and shit. And fuck, man. <laughs> That's that's a possibility. So, and it may have been, what they a lot of people say is it's dormant in all of us. Or not all of I'm sorry, in the ones that have it, like me. And it, it, it just pops out at a certain age. That's what they say. But no one oh. knows because the human brain is not mapped. They would say, you know, there's, there's so many variations. And, it, and I could have it, and it could skip generations. You know, that's just the way it goes. It can skip two, three generations at a time. So, you know, I was looking I before we started this interview, I was looking on my cell phone at uh, kind of how many people have it in America. And right now it's like one percent, right? It's like I don't know the percentage, but what I saw was two point four million adults have schizophrenia. That's a little bit less than one percent then. Yeah. Is it? Because there's three hundred. Yeah. Three hundred fifty some odd million Americans. Damn, you math genius, you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, uh, so I lost my train of thought, damn it. So, oh. okay, yeah, so what I was seeing on the images was uh, people with schizophrenia, like their whole brain is active, it, which is really weird uh, hmm. on the brain scans. I didn't cause, know that. Because a lot of humans, uh, they have just – activity in like small parts of the brain you know like if you're art, art being artistic at the time then it shows a little map of it or if okay. uh you're being you're doing math or you know it just shows like lights up certain sections at a time whereas people when they're having schizophrenia and they're in an episode at the moment like their entire brain is just fucking going off yeah that that must be um like a like a react uh what's the what's the word you would use for that like a defense mechanism or 
Oh yeah, yeah, and, like and adrenaline mind. rush, yeah. Yeah, and um, I, you know, because I, I, I can contemplate that because you know it does feel like my brain is in high gear all the time, especially when I'm in an episode, which is ninety percent of the time. But so it's like super uh, high anxiety. Is that right? Oh, it, it, it's a, it's a lot like that, but it depends on the person. So I have my the quote unquote voices, which you can't tell the difference, and it's not like, oh, you know, you hear, you hear, oh go do this or go do that it's not it's not like that it's more like someone you knew is talking to you and all of a sudden you're like wait a minute is that that wasn't real you know like hold on like hold on a minute you know and and then you try to shake yourself and uh it works for the most part for me especially after i got on meds and stuff and i mean yeah i i, I have 1500 dollars a month meds that i holy take. fuck yeah I, I i can't pay for it I, there's no way that my family wouldn't be able to afford it but uh like i'm in california so we would have medi-cal you know for for yeah, stuff like yeah, that they, right right so it, it is taken care of and they were they were really super nice when i first came out here and they they kind of took me under wing and helped me out and they they diagnosed me diagnosed me after a couple of years and said oh that's paranoid schizophrenia and i i started it was so hard for them to, to dial me in because I, I talked about a lot of stuff, but they, you know, nothing made sense that was coming out of my mouth. I, I often like, sometimes I'll, I'll say things that make no sense. And then, so like, the is it like a mumble or like a in, dyslexia in, oh, or... in, in my head or do you mean the, like the voices or no, 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 no. Like when you're saying things that people can't understand. It, it, oh, 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 no, no, it's, it's like, it's perfect English, but it's, but they it's don't know what you're talking random. about. Right, right, right. It's, oh. it would be like, it's like you saying in church, fuck, you know, and it was, you know, just loud and everyone would be like, what? And I'll turn around. That's how it is all the time. So, oh, mm -hmm. yeah. So like when my dad, uh, I'm going to use him as a reference cause I've grew up with it, uh, since I was five and okay about five and what happened with him was he used to be like a drug lord like a kingpin in our area and oh, so we had like a new car like once a week we had uh he'd go gambling spend like five ten thousand dollars a week mm -hmm. uh like we had we had a lot but we lived in a little little house because he didn't want people to know how much money we had Oh yeah, I mean, and that's smart. Uh, so then what happened first was my uncle, his brother, was also he was a drug dealer also, and uh, okay. I guess rival drug dealers gave him a hot shot. They caught him, they beat him up, and they shot him up. It was supposed to kill him, but Your dad. no, my 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 uncle was supposed to oh, kill okay. him. Okay. okay, and he and survived. He survived, but now he's like. I would say like mentally retarded, like he's acts oh, like a no. kid, you know, That's like, awful. like he's seven. Yeah. Right. And, right. um, yeah. and so then my dad's starting getting paranoid from that. He's like, Oh God, I got to get out of this business, you know? Mm -hmm. And then he started doing more drugs, trying to sell more drugs. And then it just fried his brain. And, yeah. uh, my mom ended up taking me away from that situation, but I would still go visit him like on the weekends and right and he would be like there's gi joes out in the in the walnut orchards you know because we lived in a farm town so there's a lot yeah. of walnut orchards and mm -hmm. he's like they're all looking at me or you know i could hear them talking on the radios and stuff like that and then so that was yeah. like really when my mom was like all right you can't be around andrew until you get your shit together <laughs> that's not gonna happen it's uh, illness. yeah then he had a mental breakdown because my mom took me away uh oh, yeah and then he got off the drugs but the schizophrenia remained and oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. uh so when i would go over there when she started letting me go back over there he was fine for the most part but he would have his bad days and i don't mm -hmm. know if that's with everyone with schizophrenia um especially if you're not taking meds i don't know uh oh, yeah you you even with meds you have bad days but it's it's a lot more manageable a yeah. hell of a lot more manageable. And, and he would be like seeing like faces in the walls and stuff and he'd like draw out these faces all in his house like uh there's oh a God. there's a ner there's a name for that for where people see like faces in walls and like i could i could see that too like even normal people see stuff like that but like my dad wasn't even an artist but he, his these faces were so detailed that 
when he would like sketch him out on the walls, it would make my dad look like he was a fucking perfect artist. It was really creepy. Wow. Cause like he was drawing what he was seeing over the face. He's like tracing over the walls, you know, it was really mm. weird, really trippy. So he go into his house and there's these faces <laughs> just all looking at you, dude. It's fucking crazy. And, yeah, uh, I can, I can relate to it was mostly nighttime, though, where he would always be like, I hear things outside or, you know, they're trying mm-hmm. to get me and stuff like yep. that. And I don't know. Uh, it kind of scared me growing up. So I never got into drugs. I never got into drinking. Um, so him being like that kept me straight, so to speak. That's awesome. Yeah. That is awesome. That would, that would mean the world to him if he could actually truly not, not understand it because he probably would. But he wouldn't be able to hold on to that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. That's one thing. You get these ideas in your head. Like, you're like, oh, okay, I'm normal again. You know, I'm fine. I'm fine. Everything's going good. And then all of a sudden you have another break. And you're like, what did I do wrong? Okay. And then you try to fix it. And you, you do everything. Every, you do think of the stupidest, weirdest shit. You think, you know, oh, I'm, 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 I'm a homosexual. I'm this. I'm that. I'm, you know, I got to go out. And, you know, you, to for anyone that's a good hard person or I don't even think it has anything to do with that, but someone that doesn't want to act, go actually go out and kill somebody. You yeah. think of everything under the sun and you just, you know, you don't do anything. I, I was, I actually got in trouble with law because of this. Oh really? Yeah. yeah. And, um, it was, it was a horrible experience, but they, once they, they got me out here and I told them, I was like, look, dude, I can't do this work. They had me on uh, probation. And I said, I can't do this work. Something's wrong. I'm hearing shit. I'm seeing shit. Like, there's something going on. And what were you doing? Do you want to share? You don't have to share if you don't want to. Were you like walking around with a gun or something? Like, Uh, it was a terroristic threatening at my work. And uh, Uh, I thought everyone was out to get me. Yeah. So, like, my dad. stealing from me that I, yeah. Yeah. It was, it it first had onset. And I, I can remember it vividly, dude. It happened at night. And it was like my body almost shut down. And I just like all chemicals like just went up into my head and it was just the weirdest feeling. And then ever since then I was paranoid that, you know, the cops were out to get me or that, you know, you know, if I knew a gang member or something, they were out to get me or, and I wasn't really like deep or anything into the, into that game, but you know, it, uh, and not even really remotely at all, but it just scared me. I was like, Oh, anyone that knew or saw me drive a red car, you know, like I was, you know, like super paranoid. So was um, it, was it like a super adrenaline rush, like straight to your no, head? Like I don't, I don't know. I I can't explain what the chemicals were that went into my like brain or where. Like, does it, it make going. you foggy or does it make you go think faster? Like, okay. So if I had to think back, and this this is gonna take me a second. So that um, was. Oh, you know what it was? I instantly went into high alert. I instantly was like, okay, something's wrong. Someone's out to get me. Someone's out to kill me. Someone's out to do something to to me or anyone I know, you know, and it, it was just, it was a horrible feeling. So and like then, when you wake up from a nightmare and you're like, like you jump out of bed, like you're freaked the fuck out. Sometimes, sometimes yeah. I had a, man, I had a horrible nightmare one time. It was. I thought I could feel them cutting into me because that's a that's a huge thing with me is I I I think people are coming to torture me. Yeah, it's not it's not Geo Joe's or anything like that. It's and I you know I I and I'm not dis disabling because it sounds like he's in a far more advanced schizophrenia than I am. But uh, for me, it's torture. Like you know, Texas Chainsaw dudes coming, but he's just fucking with me on the daily. Dude, eventually... that's fucking scary, bro. No, it's horrible. And eventually I just, I fight it off and I'm like, Oh, I'm, I'm a warrior. You know, I got it. I got it. You know, I got this, you know, I'm in the, <laughs> I'm, I'm dragging ball Z in my head and, you know, and, um, uh, it doesn't, it doesn't help me yeah. in, in, in the end, it helps for that moment or, or whatever, you know, and whatever gets people by, I don't care if they believe they're, you know, dragon ball Z warrior or whatever, cause I still want to believe it, you know, <laughs> when I'm sick, <laughs> obviously, obviously, but yeah, it, it's bad, dude. It, it's like you just you just get this notion that someone's gonna start cutting into your teeth and 
you know, with a saw, like real slow and, you know, start oh cutting off limbs God. slowly. But then you get so bad, you're like, oh, they're going to heal it up and keep you alive for as long as possible. It's sick, dude. It's sick. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of my dad because my dad got good for like most of my high school years. And then I mm -hmm. got into college and he started dating this young girl. She was like 23 oh, and he wow. was in his 50s and she got him <laughs> back on drugs. Right. And then after she left him, like, you know, a couple months later, she left him fucked up. And, yeah. and uh, he he was like saying that his house was haunted. Like he would have ghosts come and fuck with him. Like they were cutting him or trying to fuck him up mm -hmm. the ass or, you know, stuff mm -hmm. like that. Oh dude. Yeah. That's it's, it's literally mental rape every day. It, and I'm not even kidding. It's mental rape every day. And you can't, you can't turn it off. There's no shutting it down. There's eventually winning, but it's not even a win. Cause half the time you, you do. And you're like, fuck, what did I do differently? You know? And then you end up questioning for t 20 minutes instead of enjoying that time that you have from freedom, you know? Yeah. But it's well, horrible. it sounds like you know when it's happening now. You, you, you've uh, advanced that point yeah. where you know what you're having an episode and you know it's not real, but it's still going on. But you just need well, to calm your mind, so to speak. No, I, I, I can't tell it's real. I can't. Oh, really? Wow. If I'm like right now, I'm, I'm in a good, good fr frame of mind and I'm you know, doing the best I can to get everything out. But it, there's, there's times where I'm, I'm, I believe I'm having a conversation with my whole family and, you know, they're all, Oh, you know, and I'm telling them all oh, there's, we got to worry. You know, I, I believe honestly, if I have, when I have an episode, I believe I'm telepath. That's how I deal with it. I don't know if there's a better way to deal with it. And I'm sure there is, but that's how I deal with it. So I think that I think that I'm talking to people telepathically because I have, I, it doesn't make sense to me why this happened to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was just like, what, what did I do? That was different than anyone else, you know? Yeah. Wow. So you have like full blown conversations. <laughs> it's, it's yeah. So this isn't I mean, going to set I, you I, off, I, right? I, like talking about it? No, like no, venting? no, 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 Okay, no, cool. No, 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 no. I, and I don't, I, I did one mistake once and I'm never doing that again because I, I could see how devastated everyone was around me to see that they knew, you know, they probably knew deep down inside how I could have been or whatever and didn't know what was wrong with me. But once I went, you know, once I snapped and it wasn't like snap, like, Oh, I'm going to kill everyone. You know, it was kind of like, Oh my God, what's happening. What's happening. What's happening. Oh, I got to stop this, you know? And, um, I threatened people to be like, I, you know, I was basically yelling at work. Like, what the fuck, what do we got to do? We got to point guns at people's faces. Like, what do you guys want? Like, you know, and, Unfortunately, wow. I didn't get out the exact words of how I was feeling at the time because it was just on setting. But, you know, that might have made a difference. But I mean, I don't carry the way because I know I shouldn't ever return to the work scene. Yeah. It's just it wouldn't be good for anyone. I know that for a fact. I mean, if I was like a door greeter or something, but even then it's like if anybody knew me and they were like, oh, you know, he's he's messed up. And, you know, how small towns talk and that's kind of where I'm at. It's not so. I mean, I don't think I would ever probably be able to return to work. And I, I want to, I deep down, I'm like, man, I would like to be like a truck driver or something, you know, like whatever, I don't, an airline pilot or something, you know, all those things sound cool to me at this point, but I, I just, I don't think it's safe for anyone and not, not saying I would hurt or kill anyone or anything like that, but it's just, I know what you mean. Yeah. You don't want the, all the, the, the pressure to be, especially if you go to work feeling like people are going to be pointing fingers at you and talking behind your back. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. definitely and, and not a good you can't tell. So you're like, and I would, I would walk away from this. I'm, I am that, that part you had, right. I do. I'm able to pull myself back eventually. And I'm like, and I don't act on things. I'm real shy. I'm real passive. And all these things that was, I was born with ended up being like, it's, I'm like an anomaly in a sense. And not, not to that point, like where I'm like, Oh, I'm a genius, but like, like, my natural way of doing things is not natural. So I, I kind of just work out like it's weird. It's yeah. really weird. No, that makes sense, dude. Because there's a lot of uh, high functioning people out there that have. Uh, oh, I don't even yeah. know what to call it. I guess it'd be a a, a mental issue. But oh, I'm, yeah. I'm not oh, trying yeah. to Anxiety belittle you. And... Yeah. Oh no no no. A A, a D and D or A A D A D D or whatever and yeah. anxiety and all. Yeah, that's all horrible. And people with heartache and 
loss and i mean there's so many bad things out there i'm you know definitely I, you're not belittling me at all i know what i deal with every day so it's it's nothing like that so like um when you're labeled someone like that with schizophrenia are you now like off the gun list because i know every time where there's oh, a I shooting don't i don't ever want to i don't ever want to have be around a gun again I, I don't trust i mean if the world was coming to an end Yes, hand me a gun, and if I'm getting shot, I'm going to shoot someone else, and I'll, I'll protect my family to that end. But until then, I don't want a gun. I don't, yeah. I don't, I, if I see, if I, if I had anything, it would just be like a knife or something, and I'd be like, you know. So you're very just, responsible then. You, you know oh, your limitations and shit. Oh, dude, to the fullest. And I don't even carry a knife with me, honestly. I don't. I, I have one at home, but that's just, I don't know. It's just just the way it is. I I kind of liked them when I was younger and yeah, every boy does growing up. I had yeah, like dude, ninja yeah. swords and stuff. Oh yeah, dude. I, same way. I have two samurai swords that are in. Yeah. Well, they're in a gun case, but yeah. yeah. And you and your parents don't don't get scared of that type of stuff. They're okay with that. They. It's weird. They're they were the best parents I could ever ask for, man. It, hold on, give me a second. It it was. It was hard to know that they would, because they lost a son. They, they, you know, uh, my oldest brother when he was really, really little. Oh, really? Kind of, wow. Yeah, it was a messed up situation, and they thought everyone thought they were watching him. The whole, you know, because they not having a party, but kind of like a get together, and everybody thought everybody else was watching him, and he ended up, you know, getting, you know, getting, um, falling into the pool, and there was like a cover on it, and. He got wrapped up in it. And, oh yeah. my god! Yeah. So they were super careful. They were super careful of me. They were super paranoid and this and that. And you know, I don't. They they to this day they still blame themselves. I know they do for what happened to me, and it's not their fault like at all. And um. And it just makes you feel bad about yourself too. For well, that. yeah. I mean, it it makes me like damn it. How can I get across to them that I'm doing okay? I will be fine. Like you know what I mean? Like yeah. I, I can deal with it. I can deal with it for at least for now, you know, it may get worse, but that's, that's that, you know, and that's the way it is. Somehow I'll get through. That's, you, that would be the, the hard part. So. You have an older brother too, right? Yeah. And he's a really cool dude. Um, love him to death, man. He's. That's good. He must be pretty yeah. supportive then. Yeah. He, you know, he, he is and he isn't. He's, he kind of, he wants to believe, like a lot of other people, I think, that this is all in my head, that it's something I can break out of, you know. Oh, and, uh, yeah. You know, it, but he, I think deep down he accepts, but on the surface he's like, nah, no way I'm giving up. No way I'm letting him give up. And that's the good, that's good. I don't want anyone around me to be like, oh, just give up. Like, I don't want to give up, you know, but I don't, I want to accept what I have, you know, because it's, it's not changing. <laughs> I've done everything I've under you know under the sun that was legal and normal i've done thought of everything so that at least that i could think of so so i think you know i think everybody has a little bit of it in them because you know we see things on the corner of our eyes or yeah, uh, yeah. we hear things that you know it's like did you say something you know that kind of thing i think you, we so all accept have... that fe- yeah right accept that feeling and make it wholly on your body and in your brain and then that's what we deal with every day. And and it's annoying. It's everything. It's mental rape. And so that's what. So it's like, so it's like your mom coming into your room and asking if you want a sandwich. And then 15 minutes later, your mom comes in for reals and asks if you want a sandwich. And they're exactly the same to you. Uh, I don't see them like that. I, I oh, just, you just hear them. I would, I, yes, I would hear it. And then if it, if I'm watching TV or, um, you know, looking at like a, a, a program it's it's like a i don't have really visual hallucinations as much oh, okay um uh, but auditory oh it's horrible dude horrible but like it's so real that literally i'll have uh, sometimes i'll just be like okay uh did you guys call me and they'll be like no you know it's weird huh yeah well i mean people do that too though so like i'll be right, sitting right. here watching tv and like wait did Tara call me <laughs> yeah yeah and and that's fine that's i had that you know when i was actually normal pretty much i i did have little paranoia issues sometimes but when i was yeah i i get how it is when you're when you're quote unquote normal 
Yeah. And it's nothing. It you don't you don't grasp fully. Like if you see someone that's retarded or something like that, you're like, oh, you know, that's terrible. But you don't really grasp it until you go through it, and you're like. And that's why I, I, I think that all the time I'm like, oh, you know what? It's because not I didn't I didn't make fun of anyone like that when I was maybe a, maybe a little bit like, oh, that's funny what he did. Like, haha, you know? Yeah. Little but, kids do that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And um, but not nothing like that. And then I always think, oh, you know, it's just it's just God telling me. And, you know, I'll, we'll get into that, I guess, a little bit by the whole thing about God. But it's just God telling me uh, uh, that, you know this is this is what it's like to be them and then i'll get better and i don't but so elaborate a little more on that so do you think it like when when you're in these episodes obviously not now because you're good but when Mm -hmm. you're in these episodes you feel like god's trying to send you a message or the devil or demons are after you or yeah that's so i had i had a bad shroom experience once and this is kind of what makes me think that god exists and I don't know if it's real. I don't know. I don't know any of that. You know, I'm not, I'm not, that's not what I'm here for to convince anyone. I just, yeah. you know, I'm just kind of doing my thing. And I, I, I know I, you know, talked to some of the guys in discord and I'm like, Oh, Hey, you know, you got to believe in God. But I was, you know, stupid. And, but anyway, I had a, I had a bad experience and, and it was literally like when I asked for God's help, the room spun around me. And I know, you know, I know it's possible for it to all be in my head, but, and the room spun around me. Everything went back to normal, and I was fine. And I just like sat up in my bed, like out of. I I literally it was the only time I've ever cr- and like that was the weird part too because I I've never cried out to God like help me while I was th- doing this before yeah. when I was having that huge trip on on shrooms I was like God help me you know like like meant it like it, it's hard to mean something when you you know. But then I, I meant it and, it, and it happened. And I was like, you know, there's got to be something. There's something, you know. So that's what makes me want to believe. But, okay, so the, so the room, I'm trying to get a better picture. So the room was spinning and you're like, God, please make this stop kind of thing. And then it stopped. Basically. Yeah, it okay. Just instantly. And, then, you know, maybe it was my adrenaline or something snapping me out of it. There's, there's probably a scientific reasoning for it. But it, it helped. It helped me. You know, so I, kinda... cause we have a, a friend here that games with us. Pothead is his gamer tag and right, right. he's very, he's, he grew up very Christian, very religious and cause his oh. parents are, and now he's atheist because he feels that it's a waste of time and money and he oh, I, feels I, the Bible I, I is that. wrong. Um, I and, and I took, you know, religious classes in college and, I, I did find out, you know, a lot of people don't understand that the Bible that we have today has been edited from culture oh, yeah. to culture to culture and things have been left out or added in and, and, mm-hmm. you know, there, um, there's, there's no telling what was supposed to be in there. What's yeah. not at this point. No, Basically, no. you know, you have a story of, uh, uh, some of there's a greater being out there than us, whether he's a God or not. I guess to us it would be a god if you could create a planet, you know, mm-hmm. and a solar system. But uh, I had a near-death experience probably six years ago, five years ago, okay. and I was I was sleeping and um, I I stopped breathing, and because uh, I, I I when I was little I had lots of surgeries for ears and tonsils and you know breathing issues so i know i've always had kind of a mild sleep apnea and um but i've never gotten the machine thing but i had stopped breathing and i i woke up and i couldn't breathe you know it just wasn't working and then like i started to die and that's an awful feeling but uh uh, you know what i saw was like i could hear i before i saw anything you know i'm just laying there trying to breathe and i couldn't breathe and i heard these drums and it started to be super peaceful like this drum beat it was just going 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 just drum beat drum beat drum beat and then i started to like lift out of my body and i'm not a druggie so no no, you're fine you're fine i started to lift (laughs) out of my body i'm like oh fuck i start this is where i start to panic you know my oh my god i don't want to die but this drum beat was like calming me down so every time I'd hear this drum beat, it was like a meditative, like I was getting super calm. Like the more I was coming out of my body, 
the more I was becoming aware of the universe and everything. Like if you thought of something, like if you had a question, like, um, you know, I I didn't have this question, but let's say when was the earth created? Like when you're connected to the universe, you like instantly know answers. So like at the time when I was dying, I was like, am I dying? And it's like, yes. Like you instantly know, like, yes, you're dying. Like this, this can be it. And I was lifting, and then by before I got to the ceiling, I'd say about like halfway between the floor or my bed and the ceiling, so like I guess three quarters of the way up to my, the ceiling of my roof, um, mm-hmm. I ended up going into this white. I don't. I want to say room, but it's not because you can't see any walls. It's just pure white everywhere. And there's this fucking Aboriginal dude. Like, I'm like, why would there be an Aboriginal dude? Like, I don't even, like, I've never studied Australia. Like, you know. Yeah, I, yeah. That's and, awesome. And um, Aboriginal dude just fucking banging the drums. And um, <laughs> That's so and, awesome, dude. And like I was saying was I was asking these questions in my head because uh, or in my spirit form because you don't have a mouth or anything. Right, and, right. And, uh. I was thinking things. So I was thinking, I was like, so I'm dying. Why am I dying? And the answers were because you're giving up on life because you're depressed because you just graduate, wow. graduated college and you're not doing anything with your life. Like uh, your body's not dying, but your soul is dying. So we're going to put a new soul into your body. So there still be an Andrew, but it won't be you. And so Mm. basically they're saying like, you get a free pass. You're not going to go up or you're not going to lose karma. You're not going to gain karma. You're not going to lose karma. And you're just going to be, you're going to be given another chance. So if you want to go back, be born again, you can do that. Or you could just chill with us. And so it's like, no, 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 I don't want to die. I changed my mind. I'm not giving up. I don't want to give up because I was depressed because I wanted to marry a girl and you know, she didn't uh, oh, we ended up breaking feeling. up and <laughs> um, I just graduated college. And after I graduated college, I was interning at Modesto parole uh, agency to become mm-hmm. a parole agent. And I was like, man, I don't, I was meeting all these different law enforcement agencies and these guys were assholes. I'm like, man, I don't want to be an asshole. Like I don't want to go to work and be an asshole like these guys. So right, like, I, right. I felt like I just wasted my life away. It's like, fuck, like what? You know, what I the don't, fuck's the point? Yeah. yeah, what's the point? And so this was like, I feel like this was uh, the spiritual world giving me a way out, so to speak. That's awesome, dude. And, um, and then he was just beating his drums. And then uh, and I was like, no, I want to go back. I, I don't want to give up. So I started being lowered into my body. I could see my body there. And... Uh, <laughs> And I went back in my body and I woke up and I, you know, you sit up real fast and I could breathe. I could breathe. I was sucking in all the air. And, um, I believe he, they chose the Aboriginal guy because then I could remember because some, (laughs) you know, like something completely weird like that. Yeah. Right. So you could actually remember it, your experience. So like, Hey, you were given the chance to leave. Now you better do good with your second chance, so to speak. Yep. So, like, I believe in a spirit. I don't know if it's, like, the Christian God or a Muslim God or, you know, whatever, the Buddha. But uh, Mm -hmm. I believe there is something. (laughs) Yeah, I believe there is something higher. I believe we're all kind of connected spiritually. or Actually, I guess you could interchange the word, like, spiritually with... uh, Because we're electric by nature, you know. We're all energy. We're all energy. Oh, right. I didn't know that bodies runs on energy and bacteria oh. <laughs> our bodies full of bacteria. yeah but this is mostly good bacteria right yeah I, yeah I, that, yeah yeah man that's interesting dude I've, I've heard you say some things like uh on the on you know on the disco run but not not anything like that like that was that's really intense man that would have been quite the experience yeah, I'm going to do a full podcast on the type of experiences I've had. Um, but mine aren't like yours or my dad's. Uh, mine's are in, mine are in my dream states. Um, because mm. after, after I had this experience, like my dreams became very uh, realistic. 
they're extremely lucid where I could feel, I could taste, I could smell. Um, so I'm debating because I don't want to, I guess by interviewing you, it gives me more power to come out and say stuff. But I don't want those nice. around me that love me to think that I'm fucking psycho too. Because like during the daytime, <laughs> I'm I'm completely normal, right? So, right, but right, like right. when I'm when I'm dreaming, like my dreams don't feel like dreams. It's like I'm living in another reality. Like I'm another version of myself. Like I'm another Andrew. Yeah, yeah and, maybe that's how dreams are supposed to be, though. Yeah, no. it's very weird. Like ever since I had that near death experience, like now I could completely like remember everything, like all my dreams. Um, That's awesome. Like my dog just died like uh close to two months ago, and I that made me really depressed. I gained like fucking ten pounds because I was just eating. I'm like, I eat when I'm depressed, yep. you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. yep. and my um. Uh, so now like in my in my dream state like i could like visit my dog and like pet her and you know walk with her for a bit and tell her how much i love her which is really weird because I, I i feel like maybe there's other people that can experience that but it is yeah. so fucking real but when i have these type of dreams like i'll wake up exhausted like like I was up for fucking twenty four hours. Like I'm just exhausted for the whole rest of the day. Yeah, dude, I've got a I've got a good story for you. It's, it's not not nearly as long and as cool as yours, but my <laughs> uh my grandfather was uh dying, and I uh we went out to visit him in uh I think it was Memorial something Virginia Memorial Hospital or something. It, it was you know a place for vets when they when they're in their later stages of life and you know we came back i was all sad and you know i told him all these promises of what i was going to do and be in this and that <laughs> but uh you know i ended up going out to hawaii with some friends and then when i was out there i got a, a pain like in my neck and shoulder that did not it was not going away and you know uh, my buddy's sister was like trying to massage and do all this stuff and nothing was helping and er the whole time there i was there probably about a week and it was just in pain i come back and my brother's like hey you know i didn't want to tell you this while you're out in hawaii but grandpa passed away and then it, the pain instantly went away weirdest thing weirdest thing like i didn't there was no way for me to know and and you know, did he so have I, like a heart attack or stroke because like that you uh, get those type no, of pains when you would have that I'm not, I'm not sure, but, um, my, I know my mom was there with him at the, at the very end. And she, she said it was a peaceful passing. So, but, you know, uh, see, that's why I feel like everyone's connected through energy because I would oh, be yeah. little, like in middle school, I had a lot of bloody noses growing up and I'd come oh, home okay. and my mom would be like, before she even seen me, cause I rode the bus and like, I, as soon as I opened the door, you know, my mom would be in the other, another room. So she wouldn't even see my face or anything. And she'd be like, mm -hmm. did you have a bloody nose today? Oh, and I go, yeah. And she goes, yeah, I knew you did. It, it's wow, like weird yeah. shit like that. You know, people yeah. have stories yep. like that all the time. Mm -hmm. or these... My mom's always really connected with people like that. And I feel like I'm starting to get some of that from her. Yeah. It's weird. Yeah. You know, so like... I, I don't want anyone to feel sorry for, you know, like me or your dad or anything like that. Like we, I don't well, actually, I don't No, I'm not saying that I, that was wrong. Um, you know, if you want to feel sorry for your dad, that's fine. But I don't want anyone to feel sorry for me because I think I'm a better person because of this, honestly. Oh, really? I'm not, yeah, oh, I'm not saying I was a bad person, but I was definitely heading in the wrong direction, man. And this, this wake up call was the best thing to happen to me now now a lot of bad stuff and a lot of fallouts happened because of it you know and but it w it woke me up enough to be like you know what i'm staying on the straight and narrow until i die <laughs> you know That's i feel like you know if my dad was here maybe he'd say the same thing because yeah i mean yeah. what what comes of drugs and guns and stuff you're gonna die most of the time you know if you don't yeah. get out oh. soon enough and, and see this is this is where i'm like trying to contemplate where your where your dad was at but he was in a such a worse position that that paranoia would be so much stronger for him and that's why he would you know he's probably 
having a real, real tough time, but he's probably, you know, he's probably a lot stronger than I ever could imagine to be. So. Yeah. Well now he lives with my aunt in Washington on an apple farm and she makes him take his meds, you know, she fucking, you know, take your meds all the time. (laughs) Oh yeah. And you know, they really do help him. Uh, he, he complains sometimes of, you know, being drowsy or or feeling sick, I guess, but you gotta, you gotta learn to mold with them. It's, yeah. it's hard, but yeah. But you know, he it, he he understands now that he's better with them. You know, he can't fucking yeah, miss that's them. Good. I dude, I just got some image in my head of like him smiling. I I don't even know what he looks like, but just him smiling like a content <laughs> smile. It's weird, dude. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's all good, bro. Yeah. Yeah. He's a he's yeah, a Mexican. I, just, dude. I, I don't know. That was bugging me. I was like, hold on. I didn't want anyone to think i want them to feel sorry for me like i'm definitely better than i was you know 20 or 15 years ago no like, and and that's not why i'm having this episode I, oh I guess, right, right 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 i guess i'm having this episode mostly so if anyone listening you know i don't have a lot of listeners yet on my podcast but there are yeah. are some no, and, up. and yeah and if if they're just happened on my youtube channel or something and they feel like this is going on with them that you know it's good to hear help, it does help it does yeah. help and dude therapists i used to always make this is the thing that makes me mad i used to always make fun of oh you, you go well not you go to therapy but like oh therapist therapist this this that like that's that's silly how's someone gonna tell me how i feel but man they listen they care they really do a lot of them do i feel like you know yeah i saw a therapist a few times after my cousin died uh last year and uh that really helped dude it really does if you're, if you're willing to accept the fact that someone wanted to make this their career and you and you're like all right let's go let's meet eye to eye with them let's just be like let's let's let it all out on the table and like dude i almost broke down in tears talking to them like i don't know what's going on and this and that and they they just looked at me and it was just like they understood and i was like oh my god oh yeah Yeah. dude i was crying in front of my therapist i'm not even gonna lie like because i just lost my cousin i was depressed i was like fuck. Mm -hmm. that's awful losing somebody man yeah, super hard for me. Oh god! Like I hate going to like graveyards and hospitals, but like I was so happy I went to to see my cousin in the hospital like the day before oh. she passed away. Like she was still awake, oh, and we were able to talk. She was in a lot of pain because her her leg got infected. It was like a necro. I forget what they're called, a necrotic type infection. So it was like oh, eating wow. her away, basically, like super fast. And then her body went into shock and she went into coma and she died. So really what they should have done was once they knew it was like killing her, they should have just chopped off her leg. But chopped off her what? Her leg, you know. Oh, really? Oh, I, c- couldn't they have just like uh, over injected her with morphine or something? Wouldn't that be a more they, they tried that, but she wasn't at the oh, right no. hospital. Like if she was at a higher tier hospital, they probably would have amputated yeah. her leg. Yeah. Don't get me started on that. <laughs> uh, but I'm I'm very glad. I told all my family, like, God, guys, like I know she's always in and out of the hospital because of her lupus. Yeah. Um, but you guys need to come and see her. Nobody was going to see her. I was like, all right, well, if she goes, it's on you guys. And wow. I was the only one that went to go see her. Man. Yeah, so I was upset with the family for a little while, like, you know, because of that. But. Yeah. Yeah, but I got over it. You know, everybody has their own things to do. Yeah, yeah my uh, my brother didn't uh, come to my mama's uh, funeral, and a lot of people I think were not mad at him, but we were just kind of like, why, you know? And but he deals with it differently. He hates hospital. They get sick. Like, just wants to pass out as soon as he gets into a hospital or something. Yeah, I'm the so same way. Really I, I yeah. can relate to him too. Yeah, I don't like funerals. Yeah. He's he, dude. He's a good dude, and like you know deserves to be accepted for for that you know and i do i don't there's you know i if i was like all of a sudden just like super anxious or anything about going somewhere yeah you know you, i mean i i get the whole like you know you gotta do this for you know because i'm taking care of my grandma right now kind of like i'm going over there every night staying the night with her i'm i'm giving her pills every day i'm making sure she gets uh you know gets to the doctor's office she's, she needs to go Cause she she broke her uh, femur and we think you know it might be oh wow 
yeah towards the uh, end of end of her uh, d you know days here so i'm kind of just like there as support and uh, it it was hard at first man but i feel like i have more of an affinity to that stuff now especially with everything i've gone through so I was yeah. like, you know what, I'm going to stick it out. I was crying like a baby the first day. I was like, man, this is hard. Like, you know, because I was over there like all all day, like 18 hours, you know. And um, and then finally I was like, all right, you know, this is going to be good. She's she's getting better and this is going to be good. It's hard, though. It's super hard. Oh, yeah. When you see someone you love suffering. Oh, my God. Yeah. I think that's one of the things, though, that I've learned now. Uh as an older or, or a younger middle-aged person is um, that when someone's really suffering and you don't know if they're going to make it or not, like you at least need to go see them because it's going to oh, yeah. kill you inside yeah. if you don't go and see them. Oh yeah. It oh, does. Yeah. If you get, if you miss the funeral, they're already yeah, gone. That's, like that's, that's yeah, different. True. True. You know, they're already and gone. He, he definitely took time out to see Mama when she was. Uh, yeah. And, and none, like, I didn't even know it was that night, like that she was. You know, and I seen, I've seen her plenty of times, so it was good. But she had a uh, dementia. When oh, she, she did. Passed. Yeah. So it was, it was real bad, and she didn't remember basically who we are, but or who we were. But uh, actually, the night that she passed, uh, one of my cousins and my mom were both there for her, and they, they were there up until she, she slipped off. That shit's so sad, too. Dementia and Alzheimer's. There's, oh uh, cause I'm a horseshoer, so I go out and ch trim and shoe people's horses. And, um, I had this one account where I would go and trim, like, three or four mini horses. So they're, like, the size of dogs, you know? Oh, wow. And, uh, I go out there and the, I do it the first time. The guy helps me. I go out there the second time. The wife's like, uh, my husband was diagnosed with, uh, Alzheimer's dementia and it's very uh, fast paced one it's the worst type and I go okay she goes so can you catch the horses if he's unable to and I go yeah and uh, so she helped me that time and then I go back out there you know another month and a half later and uh, he's out there and he kind of doesn't remember me and he kind of does so he helps me mm -hmm. so yeah, right. now and then we're going now it's the fourth time and now he's like uh, do I know you? I go, oh, I'm just here to do the horses. Don't worry, I could catch them. Go, okay, okay. He comes out there and he kind of pets them, but he's like unsure of the little horses. And wow. then the fifth time, he was fucking terrified of the horses, dude. Like, what? Like, he didn't know what they were. He thought they were going to eat them. Like, and they're these cute little fluffy dog sized horses. <laughs> and then I go out there like the seventh time. So this is like the last time in the year. And uh, she's like, yeah, we had to put him in a home because he was wandering off. He's driving off. He was walking off and getting lost. And wow. it's like, shit, dude. In one year, that fucking 45 year old man fucking he his brain just went away. Like, dude. Mm. That's hard to fucking see, dude. Cause I'm there, you oh, know, every man. month and a half increments, and I'm fucking seeing this dude like just like wither away. Yeah, dude, it's fucking wow. sad. That was real. <laughs> that was. I don't know, cause you know, I get what people are saying. Like, you know, pothead is like, if there's a god, why would he fucking let shit like oh. that happen, dude? <laughs> <laughs> I question that all the time. Still to this day. I'm like, dude, come on, let's let's end this nonsense going on. You know, like, what is what's the deal? But so, my theory behind that. Do you, you know how there's some really, really, really demented people out there, right? Like, not, and I'm not talking about mentally. I'm not talking about anything. Yeah, Nothing they're like socio psychopaths. Oh, yeah, and I don't, and I, and they probably can prove that there's a lot of them out there that are just upper echelon tier, you know, genius quality, that have nothing wrong with their brain, but they are just sick in the head, right? Yeah. So you you end up developing a hatred for those type of people that are raping and murdering and torturing to the fullest extent, dude. I'm not talking about like, uh, you know, and there's no such thing as light rape, but dude, they, you know, there's some horrible shit out there. So you end up developing like an affinity to hate these people. Like, you know, t I do personally, I'm like, man, why would they do that sick dude? It's messed up. So to me, it's like, if there is a God and we had free will to come to this place, right? 
And obviously we, you know, it, it's one thing, oh, you know, make everybody perfect, make everything fine. But then you have no decision and no process of, you know, have no hard, hard, hard life. If we can wipe away all these scars, you know, that's fine. But to not understand in, in your psyche, in your, in your understanding, like that these, this is bad people. We can't jump out of heaven to go into hell to save these people when they don't want to be saved. Like, you know, it's almost like a battle of wills. I don't, I personally believe that we start at a certain point and end at a certain point. It's not like, oh, we're just perfect to begin with. I don't believe that. I know a lot of people do. I, but I don't see it. Like, and if we are, and if we are that perfect person, then let's be that now, right now, right here. But no one can. No one can stop 200 people rushing their house with AKs and shooting them dead. I you mean, know, unless they're a god and special forces, and you know, you know. But it's just there's a lot of ifs, if ands, and buts there. So. And that that term you use, perfect person, though it it's very what's the correct word? It's um relative very relative to what what religions or beliefs that you have um right. you know there's a lot of different what is being perfect you know because in some cultures it's okay to do things and in others it's not right, you know right. in uh, the middle eastern culture you can marry a girl that's nine years old um mm. whereas in the <laughs> western culture you can't that's considered no, pedophilia yeah. Uh, right, right. in uh, you know, in Turkey, you can have sex with the goat, whereas over here you can't. <laughs> That's considered bestiality, you know. So right. it's very relative. Um, and I get what you're saying. Yeah, but there's there there's no fine line between horrible and not horrible. I think so I think to be able to learn that on like I would have wanted to learn it on my own. I I've been through everything I've been through. I wanted to, I want to learn. I want to have my own mind. I don't want to be controlled by some being and made perfect all instantly. Like I, I get the possibility there. Right. But then you have, you had no control. So if I was God and I said, well, I'll just make everything perfect and call it a day. Or what if just the one, what if it was like, what if they need this? What if my child needs this in his life? What if he needs a hard, a hard reality? Yeah. Well, I'm going to do it. That's, that's me. And that's, that's why I'm like, I accept that. And, I, and I'm not accepting the fact that all these people have this horrible shit done to them. And, I, you know, I've had a couple of horrible things happen to me, and that's just the way it goes. But I also, you know, I'm not living in, you know, like slums and, you know, getting raped and destroyed or whatever every day. Yeah. But, like, it's... it's, it's I understand. I think yeah, I understand it's a what fine you're saying. Line. Yeah, it's, it's, hard, it's hard to talk about, and it's hard when you, when you go straight to the end. Without having the beginning, it's like it's like knowing how to ride a bike without even getting on it. Like, you kind of you're gonna fall. So I feel like understanding and your brain and um, everything is is like riding a bike. You have to get on and keep doing it and keep practicing knowledge and all these things. You should practice on the daily. So why would people assume that they know everything about every anything unless it was they were at the end of their life and they would probably have the most experience to give? You know. I I agree with you. I don't n- necessarily know if we're born perfect because and it's yes, it, it's it's true. We might, have, we, we might be locked in a game in our head where we're like, okay, this is gonna teach you, and we're gonna wake up and be like, all right, hey, we're all perfect. That's fine, you know. <laughs> that would, that's also po- I dude. I trust me. Like I've thought so many different of these scenarios, but in the end, it's like, what's to stop everything? What's to yeah. What's to end all all discussion? There's there has to be something, and if it if it's anything like I thought think it can be, then I think we're we're gonna be in good hands in the end. It's gonna be a hard fucking road getting there, but like they, some people say, we go hard on Earth. So, <laughs> well, there is some interesting things going on in the science field. They they found a god oh, particle. God, so they found a fucking spirit particle, and they found a black hole particle. And they found a new, a new type of atom, you know, and so there's these things where after you die and you have these scientists studying your body and they could see a ghost particle leave your body, um, wow. or they're doing the CERN, uh, the 
hydrogen colliders where they fucking smash atomic atoms and now they created a new type of atom and they're calling it like the the fucking uh god particle um wow. there is some crazy shit but then you have people like elon musk who's one of the sm- probably the smartest person in our generation uh right. And he's saying, and others, others just as smart as him, like the guy that just died. Uh, what was his name? Uh, the guy, the crippled dude. Uh, oh, Stephen from, uh, Stephen Hawking. Yeah, Stephen Hawking. You know, they believe that we're in a fucking giant computer simulated, you know, oh, video yeah. game, yeah. so to speak. Yeah, and uh, that that's one way to think of it. So, if, yeah. if it doesn't drive you nuts, do it. You know, <laughs> until, until until I, I promise you though. I, I've known some people that are, you know, my, I hate to say it, but I'm pretty sure my grandpa didn't, wasn't a huge believer. And at the end, you know, that's, I believe that's what he wanted was to believe. Yeah. A lot yeah. of, a lot of people like that was uh, a, a lot, a lot of it that happens. And I feel like you still, even at the end, if you don't believe, and I know some people are going to lock themselves off by just hearing that they're going to be like, Oh, well then I'll never believe, you know, or whatever the case may be. And I know Jeremy's there, there, dad there was all... the same. He believed towards yeah. the end. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, did he? I didn't know that. That's awesome. Um, at at the end, I feel like there will always be a choice. There will always be like, look, come up here or go down there or, or however, upside or left or right or however you want to look at it. You know, I feel like there will always be a pure and undefined choice that you're going to have. And I don't think a lot of people have had I don't. I don't even think I've had that. I have trouble with faith every day, and I want to. I want to be like, just like, oh, I believe in God. You know, I have trouble with it every day, and it doesn't. You know, it doesn't help. You know, being schizophrenic, but it's it's a tough road. Why do you it's say it doesn't day. help? I would think it would help, like knowing that there's something. Uh oh, believing believing that God helps, but not having this illness because it doesn't fix everything, and I don't, and I'm not asking Him to. I feel like at that point, I'm asking for a bike. Everyone has it tough. Everyone has it hard. Why am I going to cry to God because I have schizophrenia that I want to be fixed? I don't. I don't care. I want to just live and be, be, be with my friends and my family and the people here on earth and, and survive and suffer and have fun and have you know, a good life until I die. Yeah, that's like that feel. movement that came out. I don't know if it was the beginning of this year or the end of last year. But the Down syndrome people, they were airing it a lot. They had their own commercial and everything. And um, it was basically a big movement of the Down syndrome people that, you know, said, you know, we accept the way we are. Now it's time for you guys to accept us. Oh, you yeah. Know? And yeah. That, that made a lot I of agree. sense, dude. Like I if, if they can if they can uh, feel good about being who they are, knowing that they're different, then who the fuck the am part- I to point a finger at them, you know? Right, and the part that drives me up the wall is that we get blamed a lot. Uh, they, usually, a lot of the time, you know, uh, you know, us, you know, black people, Mexican people, every, you know, a lot of that is looked at first when it comes to a crime or something. Or if you oh, tell yeah. like a cop, yeah. you're like, if you're like, I'm, oh, I'm schizophrenic, they'll look, they'll, you have a, a higher chance of being treated poorly than than. Bad. So, it's it's almost like people have an affinity to say, oh, he was mentally disturbed when he killed someone. It wasn't just that they were a sick or demented or evil person and not demented as in, you know, you, you understand what I'm saying. Like, I know. Yeah. The, the, that, you're, you're, that, you're automatically treated differently. They, they automatically say, oh, well you must've done it. Cause you're fucking tripping. Yeah. You know? Right. Right. And yeah. it's like, it's not like you, you can't be a good person and have a mental illness. It's impossible. And in, in, in most people's thinking. And the sad part is I thought I used to think that way. Like, oh, not not that mental people were messed up, but I used to think that way, like, oh, yeah, th- these people, oh, he definitely did it. Or, you know, that whole n- small-minded, narrow narrow mentality where you're like, oh, I, this guy's, uh, you know, or Kavanaugh's uh, a guilty, you know, instantly. with just look- Or just knowing he's a Republican, they know he's guilty. <laughs> and, and, vice, and vice versa. Yeah. You know, definitely, definitely. So and that, that, that's that mentality that really scares me every day, like more than, more than schizophrenia. The, the you know, people that haven't that had their minds open to a reality that's bigger than their own that they can't accept that there's a gray area. Like you know, my my buddy tells me that a lot. There's there is a gray area, and people need to accept that. Yeah, and I feel like our society is 
getting worse now um obviously it was bad you know back in the kkk days and uh and then i felt like it got good you know and then we had obama and that um to be fair because i'm independent but i'm mostly lean republican but i know a lot of republicans were giving obama shit because he was black and they thought he was a muslim so i feel like i feel like that did start something um but at the but at the same time you have the the black lives matter movement that started during obama and they were very radical and aggressive very ridiculous and obama didn't put a stop to both sides he needed to say hey you guys need to calm the fuck down you know oh yeah and i would have respected obama so much more if he you know if he said hey you white guys need to calm down get over it i'm black and i'm president and you fucking black people need to get over it uh you know get over yourselves there's no slavery now no one living has owned slaves like you need to fucking stop that oh and it's funny you know what's his name uh who's a fisher bobby fisher the uh, chess player uh yeah i think i've heard of him Yes, so he he made a comment he, one time or made a quote, and he said, "If black would quit worrying about equality, they might worry about winning." And they was talking about chess, but it was an interesting the way he put it. Now I'm gonna sound probably horrible saying that, but it's true. If you stop worrying about the things that already are changed, you can start worrying about winning the game, and that's you know getting through life the best you can, not hurting anyone, not stealing, doing this, doing that, you know. Everybody makes mistakes. That's the way it is. Everybody makes mistakes. I don't yeah. care. Yeah, and that's but with everyone. Do the best you can from it. You know, that's the important part. Yeah, there's these fucking white trash people on my Facebook. You know that I went to school with, and these oh girls God. that got pregnant in high school, and they're still fucking mm-hmm. soapbox every day, commenting on their Facebook about, oh my life, oh, oh I'm sick, oh my head hurts, oh I'm having a heart attack, or <laughs> oh my baby won't stop crying. I don't know what's wrong. I'm gonna go to the hospital. Yeah. It's like, yeah. dude, fucking every single day, all day long. Like, dude, like mm-hmm. you're your own problem. Like, you need to fucking step out of your head, go get a job, and fucking work out your stress. Like, or if you don't want to work, go fucking for jog, Take up jogging or bicycling. Like, oh, yeah. Be be a good citizen, at least, if you're not going to work. Yeah, I, I get it. Trust like, me. Like, <laughs> dude, like, you, 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 you know, like, they don't have an excuse. They're not mentally ill. Like, they can... They can relieve and stress even, even by going the, out and doing stuff. Excuse. Even that's not a full excuse yeah. either. Yeah. If you cannot fathom being at work, or and I've tried multiple times, then that's different. But if but if you think you can get by on something, anything, it's better than being on the government's paycheck. And I haven't been for 13 years. I'm contemplating it because I know one day my parents are going to pass away, and I'm like, well, I got to do something. So, and that's hard to say because I've ne- I did I do not believe in that. I don't like it. I, I want to work, but. <laughs> It's hard. It's hard to it's hard to accept what you, what you are and how it how it all plays out. So. Oh, I feel you, dude. I'm not even talking about the work thing oh, right now, though. Oh, like, right, right, right. I'm just I'm talking about like thing. people like that. They they feel so sorry for themselves. And it's like, dude, oh, fucking get over yourself. Oh yeah, yeah. Everybody yeah. has a heart. Everybody, even yeah. the rich people. Yeah. You know. Oh, dude. You, I guarantee actors have it super hard, and and many rich people. I'm just using actors as an example. Because everyone's like, oh, their life is glamorous. They're beautiful. Like, that doesn't mean anything. And that's that's the mentality I'm talking about. People with that mentality scare me to death. If they if they see something and they're like, oh, they have it good. Perfect. And, you know, it's like it's like they hone in on it. Like, they're almost like a pit bull. And they just grab someone by the jugular and never let go, you know? Yeah, that was like the, the Black Lives Movement. They came out in, uh, I think it was last December. And they were like... Uh, they came out with a list of demands and like it was a, for white people and one of them was like if you're if you're a doctor or a lawyer and you're white and you own a house then you should give that house to a poor black family and buy a second home for yourself <laughs> this is like what the wow. fuck like you know my my fiance is a doctor pharmacist she makes 200,000 a year but and we own a house but we still live paycheck to paycheck. Like living in California is expensive, you know. So and it's not even about that. The problem that people don't understand, it's that's a 
what what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, a perfect society, or uh, there's another word for that, but that would be a perfect world, right? That yeah. and that whole and people are like, oh, you can't you can't say no, you can't you can't say that's not a possibility. It's not possible. We get eaten by bears, wolves, piranhas, alligators. You know, this world is meant to kill us and bring us to death. We don't live forever on this world. There's no possibility for that. You get sick, you get hurt, you die. That's the way, that's the harsh reality of life. So why would I give you my house because you have it hard, except what you have hard, except the fact that you're, you're, you have the blessing of realizing how hard it is to, to be and turn that into something, you know? Yeah, it's, like where I live, they have something called Valley Fever, and I, I think it's very only a few places in the world has something like it where you could just breathe in the dust and if your body doesn't catch it in time like you'll die to it just from breathing in fucking oh dust God. particles like wow. like it's like you're right this world is meant to kill us <laughs> yeah it's meant to eat us up but if you don't turn into something that you want it to be like what are you gonna be a complainer your whole life like yeah, yeah, we'll do yeah. What you want. I'm not going to. I'm not. There's no way. I'm gonna have my bad days and yell at you guys sometimes, but you know, I'm not. I'm not gonna sit there and complain my whole life. And that's why I really enjoy being around you guys, is because you always always talk about like, what is this crap's going on today? It's it's awesome being around that 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 uh, coercion or whatever. Yeah, you know, I I in the Discord app that we use for gaming uh, for people that are listening, I. I post things, you know, that are very political, but I'm not complaining about it. I'm just mostly like, dude, look what the look fuck's going on. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Jesus know, a lot of people don't know. And the sad part is the people doing it don't even know what's going on. And it's going to be a hard wake up call when they do. And that's hard one. one of the reasons why I wanted to do this podcast, because so many people don't understand what's going on in the world and in their backyard. They don't understand the people like you that have uh, schizophrenia. They don't understand the firefighters here in California. Oh my God. They don't understand uh, what's going on in Venezuela where they can't even afford to buy a banana and there's people are starving to death. Mm -hmm. They don't mm -hmm. understand like uh, last Why year are marching, marching across the border or trying to, you know? That, yeah. Did last that ever come to a conclusion? No, they're still crossing. Um, but like last year in Colombia, there they were at three percent water in their country. Like they were literally about to start to. Um, if they didn't rain, they would have had to like. They were literally like Clean dying. Water. Oh, okay. Yeah, like they had no drinking water. It was fucking crazy. Like no one nice. had taken a shower all of last year in Colombia because they couldn't spare mm. it. Like, like a lot of people don't understand what the fuck is going on in the world. Like, they don't understand that in Dubai there is le legal slave slavery markets. Like, they're talking about our slavery in America all the time that was, you know, nobody al alive today. But right now there is fucking slavery going on in Dubai and nobody's talking about it. Like, yeah. I and don't. All these shootings that are going on and. Yeah, and, and you know that's that's true. You know the black people are like, well, a black person didn't do it; it was a white person. <laughs> well, black people kill in record numbers all the time. Yeah, but you know. So I'm not I'm not saying anything against black people. Actually, well, I guess I was, but I'm not I'm not trying to point fingers. But everyone is messed up. There's everyone, there. everyone, dude. We got but a lot it definitely, of. It definitely seems like you have a lot more whiners on one side than the other. I I agree with that. I agree. But there are some good people on the Democratic side. I do believe it. And, like, I was listening to a, a Republican guy the other day, and he said, you know, the Democrats used to be we live and die to fight for what you want, what, what you believe. That's what they used to be. And now they've changed into something completely different. And I, I don't know what they're fighting and dying for. To, to that. Like, who believes this? Who believes this crap that we're being fed now? Yeah, and that's why I'm an independent. I, I believe there's good and bad from both sides. And I believe, yep. Yep. like, Italy now, um, I believe it's – italy yeah i'm pretty sure it's italy they now have combined both their democratic and conservative parties together so now they have one party and then they have the little tiny parties like you know how america has like the green party and the fucking mm -hmm. communist party but they never they never win states or anything Right, right. Um, well, they have those little type of parties in Italy also, but the Democrat and the Republican Party, the two big parties in Italy, whatever they're called over there, they, they fucking merged. So now it's just like one giant party and they're trying to make their country better.
And I, I feel like eventually all the countries are going to need to do that because mm-hmm. we're too divided and it's not healthy for anyone. Yeah, it it it, lo- it feels like we're on the brink of a, like another great civilization falling. I don't see it happening, but it may happen in a way that we're not expecting, you know. Yeah. Uh, I feel it I feel it coming, but there is always the possibility of change. There's always the possibility of something rising up in our country and being like, "Look, we need to get our shit together, you know? Come on, guys. Like, let's go." And if you take a step back and you look at your friends, you look at your conservative and you look at your liberal friends, your liberal friends have very big hearts. Uh, And they they want everyone to be in peace. They want everyone to love each other. Uh, I can't talk about the things that you want. And 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 they don't know how to get. They don't know how to get to that point. They have a dream, but they have no way of getting to that dream. The conservatives they are more about now they're not looking at that dream they're more about hey it's nice to have a dream but right now we need to fucking focus on everybody working and eating food like and if you were able to merge the both then you have the now and the future combined like and that's what we really need exactly so i don't know yeah (laughs) i don't know it sucks because we you know we we talk about this and you feel like you hope something gets accomplished with somebody that does something, you know, I mean, yeah, it is, it's too, it, it, we need a, a alignment. We need something, you know, it's, it's sad, but a uh, great change always comes with something very bad that happens. There's some type of right. calamity that has to befall, uh, whether it's a nuclear war or it's a, it's a uh, starvation, or yeah. it's a uh, total collapse of the economy or um, maybe a solar storm where it knocks out the whole electrical grid or, you know, or anything. Or maybe even something maybe not so drastic. Maybe it's just, um, uh, I don't know, maybe it's just, you know, shortage of water one year. And, you know, everybody could still drink, but now it's fucking more dangerous, like something's bad. You know, yeah. but uh, we need some kind of like after nine eleven, how er, the whole country was Came together. together yeah. Yeah. Wow. yeah. And I wonder if we would actually listen to our parents and our grandparents when we were growing up, if a lot of this stuff would have changed. <laughs> and that that's one of the issues is uh, humans forget history so easily. Mm-hmm. Like that people forget that the Democratic Party were KKK, you know. Uh, oh, but they're all about freeing. Yeah. I mean. Now everybody can change, so I, I won't say that, like... Yeah, that's true. A lot of people are incapable of change, but a lot of people can change, I think. So. It just... I don't know. I just feel like we have short it's memories. Scary. Oh, yeah. It's super scary. Like, everybody wants to forgive and forget, and I'm not... I'm not so quick to forgive, but I, I am kind of quick to forget. Yeah, and, you know, uh, the Muslim culture as a whole, I agree that there's not... There's good and the bad in the in that religion, but um they have, a, they have a long road ahead of them too but you can interv- these people that have been interviewed you know the good muslims and they say you know um if someone in your church was an extremist and was talking about maybe doing something bad would you turn them in and they go no it's against our faith we wouldn't turn them in but we wouldn't agree with them and we'd probably stop going to that church right. and that's that's part of the problem is right they need to they need this yeah yeah you you yeah. need to turn them in, dude. Like, oh, yeah. oh. that that's like uh, when my nephew did something bad and um, he got caught on video camera trying to break into a house and everybody <laughs> saw him, you know, on the news and they're like, ah. Mm-hmm. Oh. And his mom <laughs> turns him in, you know, like, oh, dude. she you yeah he he's gonna system. he's gonna hate her, you know, for a while oh, while wow. he's yeah. in jail, yeah. but she did the right thing, like. You know? Oh, agreed. Agreed. Yeah. I wish someone would have uh, done that to me when I was younger. <laughs> but I, did, I don't think I did anything super horrible, but, you know, there was times where I'm like, holy shit, what did I do? But I yeah. just, uh, you know, I wish someone definitely would have done that and just been, they would have, the cops would have gone through with it and like, look, you're in trouble and hopefully it would have settled in. But, yeah, you know, things happen for a reason. So every, they say, they say everything happens for a reason. So we'll see. But uh, I think I need to get out of here, man. It's been it's been great, dude. Oh, dude, I appreciate you doing this episode with me, Andrew. Yeah, dude, 
Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Parks, man. I, I appreciate it. I hope to be playing some games with you. Sounds like Quaz wants us all to play that Legends of Aria. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm horrible at those kind of games, but we'll see. I, right, definitely, I definitely want Oh, how's that, uh, that uh, Prime game? Oh, oh, the Amazon one, the New Frontier. Very. Oh, is that even out? Uh, no, it's still in closed alpha, but dude, it's like the best alpha. It's even better than all the betas I've ever played. Wow. Like, like it's legit. Like, it's gonna be a good game. And then this game, uh, Rune, I got into closed beta just yesterday or the day Wait, before. Is that, is that the one from? Uh, who's that from? The Rune game. Yeah, that's not the one from. Um... What's that Steam game that everybody plays? Uh, the one where you build bases. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, no, but it, it, I think it's gonna be kind of similar. Oh, cool. I'll send. I'll put the link in chat right now. But um, yeah, dude. Thanks for doing this episode with me. I'm gonna Man, stop was, it right was, here. No worries.